Hello and welcome back to God's Business. I have a huge announcement to make as well as something very awesome that I'm going to share with you guys. It's all around association, how I accidentally ended up in a strip club as a Christian in business, which I'm not super pumped about, uh, but I'll tell you guys all about that inside of this video. If you guys didn't know yet, inside of King's Brotherhood, which is the number one mastermind for Christian businessmen to grow their business without sacrificing their faith or family and really was built around this concept of when I got saved, I really did not feel connected to the church in the place of business, meaning I didn't have Christians to learn from, to run with. So a lot of times I had to go out there into secular groups to learn how to build a business, but it wasn't sharpening my faith. So I was with the secular guys learning how to make money, basically disregarding the thing that was most important to me inside of my life, which is my faith, which I know you guys can relate to. Or on the other side, I was growing in my faith, but at the same time, I wasn't around people that just were on the same mission as me. Like imagine this, if all the top pastors in the world, they all got together three times a year and they were like, we're going to grow together. We're going to share our insights together, our strengths together. We're going to support each other inside of our growth. We're going to continue to meet weekly. We're going to communicate daily on the things we need help with, the things we need support in. Everyone would be like, dude, that's going to be the craziest group of revivalists ever but people aren't doing it inside the business world. So we literally created that for business leaders and we just open up spots for our next mastermind that's in 2024. And there's apply.thekingsbrotherhood.com is where you can go if you're listening to the audio. If you're watching on YouTube, it's gonna be down in the description below. And we're taking just a handful of slots. We had 15, we just opened it up. We now have 10 left at the time that I'm recording this video. And so you're gonna to wanna to go over there right now, check it out, see what it's all about. If you're a man in business that's looking to grow his business without sacrificing his faith, which is, again, another one of those things that I'm going to talk about today. Or maybe you're on the other side. You've been growing in your faith, but you've been sacrificing your mission growth because you've been so like hoarding, making sure that you're around the right people, which I love that you're doing that. But what I found over the years of working with people, helping them build their businesses all together with the people that we have inside of our community, I've noticed that it's just not a respecter of persons. Like If a bad person cooks an egg and they cook it correctly, it's going to taste good. If a good person cooks an egg and they cook it correctly, it's going to taste good. Doesn't matter how good or bad the person is, the food will taste good if you follow the recipe. And the same thing as a Christian, if you know how to build a business, you will make an impact, you will make money, and you'll be able to do it with that money whatever you want to do. But it is a recipe. And that's why I wanted to focus on God's people that are going to tithe, that are going to give to come together and glorify his kingdom, glorify his name inside of brotherhood. So again, head over to apply.thekingsbrotherhood.com, fill out that quick app. You'll then get either approved or disapproved and have a quick conversation. It'll basically be about getting to know you, getting to know your business and seeing if we can help and support or if we know something that would be better for you. So if you're a Christian man in business and you feel called to business and you want to win in business for your family, you want to go out there and you want to work as worship, Avada in the Bible, in the Old Testament, in, in Hebrew, it talks about Avada is directly translation to work and then translated from work to worship. It's the same word. So we work as worship. Why do we work to create wealth? Why do we create wealth to create freedom? Why do we create freedom? Well, God says, let my people go so that they may worship me. So the goal of freedom is so that you can worship and you can serve the world and your godly purpose. And our goal is to use the business to not only make the impact, develop the skill sets, get the resources, free up your time so you can worship God by making a difference inside of the world. Again, apply.thekingsbrotherhood.com to check out our drop-in slots to come check out this number one men's only mastermind for Christian men, businessmen specifically. Today, I want to talk about really about the people that you're around really actually matters. And this has just become so big for me, especially in my journey. I, I was a guy that didn't know God, had an encounter with God, gave my whole life to Jesus, Ended up going to ministry school for two years, got married to my wife now. We've been married for 11 years. We have a son that's almost four, and we have another baby on the way. And I literally just bought a dog, actually. So if you guys didn't see that yet, go to Instagram.com slash Nicholas Barely, and I'm sure you will see lots of this dog because that's a huge commitment for me. And inside of this process of being called to business, like I had talked about before, I went through these different phases where I, I was in ministry, going to 15 different countries, serving the poor. I felt called to business. And when I did that, I was like, who are the Christians that I know that are in business that are walking through what I'm going through right now? So I had found some mentors. I found some courses, et cetera, some education, but I really didn't have the people that were going through what I was going through. So I really went out there and sought that. And I was just like, I can't find it in the Christian world. So I'm going to go out there just to the world 
and figure out, God, I know you've called me to this, so I need to know and be equipped on how I can make money and build this business. How can I make an impact? How can I market correctly? How can I generate leads? How can I create a good follow-up sequence? How can I great, create great sales systems? How can I have a great deliverable in a way that's attractive to the people out there? How can I get people to retain, renew, upsell, refer people, create new products inside of the company, something that really actually goes out there and makes a difference. And I, I, I wrote down a few things that I went through in that process. And, and one of them is like, I got into business for God's purpose. Like that was the original reason why I went in. I'd pray for all my customers to come in and I really didn't know how to partner with God in my business, but that was always my, my goal. And I know there's guys out there that maybe got into business first. So they really separate business and their walk with Jesus. It's just not really like they're praying for customers or, or making a difference in it. They, they got into the business and then they became a Christian. They kind of separated those two worlds. Other ones have tried to bring their faith into their business and they've been left with disappointment. And then I felt all of those things for sure. I remember crying on the floor because half the things I would do would fail. And I'm like, God, why have you left me here? You've called me into this and I'm just not making a difference. I feel like I'm not moving fast enough. I feel like if you're involved in this, more stuff would happen. And I started surrounding myself with powerful business leaders and I became business fit, meaning after failing for three years in business and really losing everything, I went all in on investing in myself. And there was not a time that any of that ended up void, but I'll tell you what it did to my heart, my process and my walk in the most important area. Because recognize this, if faith and your relationship with Jesus is the number one most important thing in your life, if your business takes you away from that, you'll always resent it because the business is taking you away from the most important thing, but you need to do the business because it's your calling and it's the way you provide for your family. So what we want to do is integrate those things together, which was very difficult for me, but hopefully from my own issues, it'll become easier for you. And I'm seeing our guys do it like absolute craziness. So I ended up surrounding myself with a lot of guys that were cheating. And I don't just mean cheating in business, finding quick ways to the cash that aren't very ethical. I saw that. But also just cheating on their their wives, their girlfriends, their their commitments, their business partners. And and at first you kind of convince yourself that like I need to be around these people because I need to be a light. God's putting me in places where other Christians can't be. And I believe that that's totally the truth. But audit yourself right now. Do you have strong Christian believers that are in business that are pushing you and equipping you and sharpening you every single day? Are those the people that, you, that you're surrounding yourself with every day that have checks and balances of accountability, advisorship, people that are overseeing you, uh, meaning like pouring into you? Do you have brothers that you're running with all the, all the time, association? Do you have new ideas coming your way all the time on new things in business, not just your current industry? And do you have GPS plans? Do you have actual business blueprints that you're executing on that are proven? And if the answer is not yes to all those things, those are required to be successful. End of story. Like if you want to not achieve your destiny, just avoid those things. But if you want to achieve it, it's necessary. So where are you getting that from? Uh, I remember one of the times that really this stood out to me, I was in my low 20s and my wife and I were married and I went to a bar, uh, which again, nothing really wrong with that, but I was just sitting there hanging out in a bar, getting a couple of drinks with some guys, huge influencers. And we ended up getting on the subject of my 30th birthday. And this is like seven years in the future, maybe eight years. And I'm going to be transparent with you guys. So, you know, be careful with sensitive ears around you if you're listening to this with your kids. But they started telling my wife in front of me that when I'm 30, I should get two different girls to basically mess with, for lack of better words, as like my gift. And we're sitting there. We're like, we're not about that. Like we we're Christians. We've committed to ourselves. We got married as virgins. We're the only people we've slept with is, is each other. And and though we were able to minister, like I, I sat there and caught myself, like I'm sitting there around all these people, like what does the Bible say about all this stuff? And so that was like straw number one that I could remember is I'm sitting there with these guys that I look up to and they have influence over me in the business world. But I'm like, man, like they have no moral foundation of what I'm talking about, no encounter relationship with Jesus. So I don't put that on them that they need to think my way, but am I guarding my heart in that way, right? Scripture talks about like above all else, guard your heart because it's it's where life pours forth, right? It's like out of out of your heart, your out of your heart, your mouth speaks. So the heart is so important to God, and I wasn't really guarding it in that way. Uh, I remember drinking more, like just small little things where it was like, you know, oh, I, I this is what the mentors do. Like they all drink a lot more, and it's great social lubricant. So I ended up drinking a lot more. I remember uh, even getting to the point where 
you know, everyone's like doing mushrooms and ayahuasca and like all these things out there that are like supposed to enlighten you. And as a Christian, like your path to breakthrough is through the person Jesus. It's not through your works. It's not through an external source. It's not through any of that stuff. It's through the person Jesus. And I just remember getting the desire to want to try these drugs to be like, oh, I'll do it in Jesus' name and the influence of that coming in. And uh, I remember ending up even at clubs, like, oh, this is where you network. This is where the guys go in Vegas. And so I'll just go there and hang out or drink water. And, you know, I'm watching all this debauchery go down and I'm in these environments. But again, I also didn't have that external sense of the people that I was running with. These were the people that I was around because I wanted to become successful. I wanted to build my business and I didn't see Christians doing things at a high level. And at the end of the day, I'm a guy that wants to win. And so I'm like, I want to be surrounded by the best. And right now I'm trying to grow in business and these are the best and I'm not going to compromise. And I really don't think you guys should either, but here's what ended up happening to me. Uh, and then I ended up one time on accident. Uh, and this was an accident. I'd said I had ended up at a strip club. Uh, I had one night, I, I ended up uh, being going from club to club with a bunch of guys and we're just hanging out and I'm not doing anything bad, but this is just my association. And I didn't know I pay $50 to walk in and it's a strip club. And I'm there with my wife. I even told her in the morning, I'm like, I just ended up in a strip club last night. Like this is insane. And, and again, it just, over time, it almost becomes like you're a frog in boiling water. Meaning if you put a frog or a crab or a lobster in lukewarm water, they'll sit there and you can heat the water and they never notice the incremental temperature change until they die, until they get fully cooked. They never try to get out. You don't have to worry about it because you just don't know. It's almost like a smelly room. If you're in a room and you and it smells, you adapt to it and you don't notice. So if people were to be like, man, it smells in here. You would say, no, it doesn't. I don't even, I don't notice that. Like you're tripping. But then you leave the room long enough, you come back, you'll smell those smells again. And so scripture tells us right here, I thought this was very interesting. Uh, I thought I was influencing for everyone else, but I was actually adapting to my environment. And so slowly over time, I started seeing many things that scripture talks about that maybe some of you guys can relate to as well. In 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says, don't be deceived, bad company ruins good morals. What's very interesting before that is Paul's just literally drilling them on the simplicity of the gospel that Jesus came as God in, in human form, died on the cross, three days later, later resurrected from the dead. And just as Adam died as a spiritual being, God is now the, the one who brings life to you because of the life that he gave, defeated the grave, resurrected again. And just the simplicity of the gospel that everyone now is questioning that had all become believers before. Why is that? It's because they're surrounding themselves with people that have been deceived and they're now bringing a false doctrine. They're saying, oh man, how could someone die and come back to life? That doesn't exist. And if it doesn't exist, then Paul's literally putting himself and his life at risk every single day for no good reason. Why would he do that? He's like trying to show them like, this is the fruit of what we believe. This is why we do it. Do you remember? And then he goes into this and, and talks about, uh, he then speaks to them about things that they do know. He's like, you guys literally are farmers. You believe that if you put this stupid seed in the ground, the seed then dies and out of its death comes life. So you say you don't believe in death and resurrection and that it's impossible, but you literally are experiencing it right here. And we've experienced it in the past. And then he goes into saying, don't be deceived because these bad morals corrupt, bad company ruin these good morals. So it's not even bad morals, it's bad company. And how often in business do we get surrounded with this bad company that then corrupts our good morals? I remember one of my great mentors that really was like a father figure to me. He ended up being secluded, kind of getting offended, and at one point completely walked away from his faith. And I remember that was who I was surrounded with. So I started questioning everything that I had believed and started wanting to jump on the bandwagon of what everyone else was believing. And that bad company corrupted those good morals. It says in Proverbs thirteen twenty, walk with wise, become wise, walk with fools and become a fool. What's interesting is right after that in Proverbs 13, 21, it said, adversity pursues sinners. So that's the fruit of it. Adversity will pursue sinners, but the upright are rewarded with prosperity. I just start asking myself again and getting faith on the inside of me of like, what life do I want? Do I want to be pursued and rewarded with prosperity or pursued with, with adversity? In 23, it even says, wealth of the righteous leaves an inheritance 
you know, for children's children, but the wealth of sinners is stored up for the righteous, which I absolutely love, by the way. Uh, and I, I, I love this scripture right here. I just saved it in my phone because it was just like, there's so many great ones. In Romans 16, 16 and 16, 17, it says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to keep your eyes on those who cause dissension and create obstacles. Uh, and I think even Romans 16, 16 before then. Let me pull this up for you guys. This is so good. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to keep your eyes on those who cause dissension and create obstacles or introduce temptation for others to commit sin, acting in ways contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. Turn away from them. Uh, another one of them says, like, avoid those who are contrary to doctrine. And basically, he's calling out. He's like, hey, these people in your life that are contrary, they believed what you believe. Now they're contrary to the doctrine. They're getting you to believe, sowing seeds of doubt inside of your heart. Of Remove yourself from them. Avoid them. They're contrary to the doctrine because they will infect you. For such people do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites and base desires. By smoothing and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting, the innocent, and the naive. For the report of your obedience has reached everyone, so that I rejoice over you. But I want you to be wise in what is good and innocent in what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. And I, I again, I just went back to this point of like, like what are the types of people I want to be around? And again, oh, oh, throughout that journey, I always like had good intentions, right? Like I was like, oh man, like this guy's not that bad. Like I can invest in their program and this program. And you know, I remember going to business events and masterminds. I went to one where people were doing drugs in the bathrooms, and I was like, man, like this is not who I am. And so though I wasn't bad, it was like my light was dimmed. Like I was like partially salty food. Like. I had now adapted to the environments that I had gotten myself into. So though I had become business fit, I had become spiritually dull. And it became this place where I was like, what do I want in my life? And I started searching, like, how can I get around business people? And, and throughout that time, like, I had built a brotherhood where we had literally gained the world. But a lot of the guys were losing their souls. They had built businesses, bodies, relationships, families, but didn't know Jesus. And it became to this point where I was like, what do I want to build? And so much like many of you listening, especially if you made it here, you either A, have been in ministry, love Jesus, spiritual growth has been big, but you failed in the business world. And you're going, I want to surround myself with business leaders and I want to do it the right way. I'm here to tell you, King's Brotherhood has the right way. We have other men that are Christians that are building rapidly growing business inside of the elite program where we just opened our drop-ins. They, they're over $1.5 million average business size. Like this is what I always dreamed of. They're doing it. But there's many of the guys out there that have gone out and built their businesses going, I know I need to build a business. You've gotten around these people much like I have that's curved the beliefs that you have that's gotten you to start. You wouldn't look at yourself now and go, wow, I'm on the biggest faith walk of my entire life. You would look at it and go, well, you know, I've never, I've never not been on that walk, but I'm not prospering the way that I should. I want to be sharpened in my relationship with Jesus without compromising on either side. And this is ultimately where I ended up and, and ultimately what led me to start King's Brotherhood. Like for me, I was looking where are the places I could join. So even right now, I'm part of a Christian mastermind called Wellspring that I love. And it's a 55K a year mastermind, maybe a little bit more now. Uh, but when I invested, and that's because I want to be around crushers that are sharpening me inside of my faith, that are the people like the scriptures talk about, don't be deceived by bad company because the bad company ruins good morals. Walking with the wise makes me become wise, but fools make me become a fool. Adver adversity pursues sinners, but upright are rewarded with prosperity. The wealth of the righteous leaves an inheritance uh, for their children's children, but sinners is stored up for the righteous. With no guidance, people fall, but an abundance of counselors, there is safety. This is so interesting to me because I've looked at people that have failed in recessions and claimed bankruptcy and lost it all, especially Christians, because I'm like, what's going to keep me from that? And when I, when I interview them and talk to them, I've interviewed like over 500 multimillionaires. And throughout that time, I recognized that their walk with God wasn't where they wanted it to be. So though they were Christians, they were not listening to his voice. They didn't have a multitude of counselors. So because of that, they lost it all. And scripture says here that without good guidance, people fall, but in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. And I will tell you, it's not worldly counselors. It's godly counselors. It's people that can bring the God vision in your heart to life. 
Because think about it. Even if you have a business, and I've fallen prone to this many times, I have a vision. I submit it to a worldly person that can build it out for me. I'm talking like physical, like website, funnel design, messaging. They will always curve you away from your faith because they don't understand it. It's not their fault. Like They really shouldn't understand it. It'd be weird if they understood it. So we have all these ungodly counselors trying to set up the roadmap for you to build a godly business and a godly life, and that will just never work. So you'll end up having the physical monetary success, but with the lack of fulfillment because you're not achieving the destiny that's in your heart. Because ultimately, financial freedom that I love from Jim Baker, he says that the definition is not having to ask money for permission to pursue God or to, to obey God or pursue the dreams in your heart. Not asking money for permission to obey God or pursue the dreams in your heart. And so again, if you're a guy like me, that is looking to build a business rapidly, be the number one in your industry, get around the best of the best, while growing their faith, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set yourself up with accountability, set yourself up with advisors, because not every mentor you have is going to be good at everything, multitude of advisors, brothers, people that you can run with on a daily basis, be, uh, get new ideas on the inside of you. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if I didn't get into a new room with a new idea. And follow proven systems. This comes to the physical, like the Bible was written thousands of years ago and people read it for today. But Christians look at business blueprints that are proven and they want to get, go at it with a new idea in a new way. It's like, no, use business blueprints. Now, you can go create that. Like you can go do that on your own. What we did inside of King's Brotherhood is I said, how can we house that into one place? And over this last year, it's been insane. We've had... <laughs> So many huge breakthroughs, guys doubling their companies, tripling their companies, coming out with new ideas that they never had before, walking greater intimacy in their marriage, greater health inside of their bodies, uh, greater fathers, greater husbands, all inside of their business, multiplying, but also inside of their faith, getting closer to God, walking in the power of God. First Corinthians 4.20 is the scripture over King's Brotherhood, which is, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. And so right now, if you're a man, and I've never said this on the podcast before, if you are a man called to business and you want to massively multiply your faith where God is the multiplier of your success, the CEO of your business, and the partner inside of your life with everything that you do, the, the director, the one who speaks you, to you, that guides you, that guides your steps, that is the lamp to your feet and the light to your path, and you want the business blueprints on how you can build your business. I have, we have an on-staff worship leader. We have a uh, a guy who was a pastor at Church of the Highlands, 68,000 person church that's the men's pastor at our church that's on staff with us as a spiritual advisor. We have a spiritual board for direction. We have the first member and a partner here, built the fourth, fourth fastest growing company in the United States, fastest growing B2C company, zero to 200 million, exited at 30 years old. And he's here advising everyone in their path. Uh, me as a leader that have access to the brothers, the multitude of those brothers that you get to run with, where you get to hear their God stories, their prayer requests, their areas they need help, and the collaboration of everyone locking arms and saying, we are going to be successful together inside of our missions. I would recommend if you don't want to go build it all on your own, but you want an access to the advisors, to the accountability, to the brothers, to those new ideas that are working today, to the GPS systems that are proven inside of our businesses that we share with you, I recommend you head over to apply.thekingsbrotherhood.com short video there explaining what I'm talking about. Testimonials galore. We have hours of them. So don't leave this up to chance. Like the only risk is to not go and apply if you are that man. Because you never know. It might not be a good fit, but at least you know. Now you can move on. Go to something else. But it may be a good fit and your life could change forever because every single man that we work with right now had to hear the message, had to step out in faith, go to the same page you went to, apply.thekingsbrotherhood.com. They all filled out an app. They were either, they were all approved, obviously, because they had to get there. They jumped on a call. Everyone has to talk to me before they can join. And then they join and their life changed. Every single one of them. But they all had to take that step. And the risk is in just not checking it out. So I'd recommend you go over there. If you want to build it on your own, great. If this doesn't land with you, then, man, I have no clue how you made it this far in the episode. Maybe you are driving and your hands, hands are not free or something like that. Uh, but this is a time where it's time for Christian men to come together, declaring what scripture says, going deep in what the Bible talks about when it comes to building a business, partnering with the Holy Spirit on how he wants to build a business today, 
partnering with the good works. We are meant to carry out God's mission on the earth. We are ambassadors. We are kings that make decrees. We are kings and priests on the earth. And it's time to carry out that spiritual abundance in Jesus, in the businesses that we're creating, and to win in the businesses in the physical. Solomon went out there and he found the best bronze worker to work inside of his company. He wasn't a spiritual blessed guy. He just knew how to build. Our goal is to provide that with guys that are like-minded, similar values, so that you can have breakthrough in your physical business and in your spiritual walk with Jesus so that you can have your business set up in a way where you can prosper as a man. Again, head to the King's Brotherhood, apply.thekingsbrotherhood.com. Maybe your first step is to go to facebook.com Type in The King's Brotherhood and join our free Facebook group. Join us there. See what the message is all about. Consume all the free stuff. It's here for you. But if you're serious about going to the next level, whether that's dropping the mastermind for the year, that we will point you in the right direction. Maybe share this with a friend of yours right now that is in business, that's a Christian man, that's in his walk. Share that with them. Share them this episode. Share with them that apply page because it could change their life and their family's life and generations to come forever. Thank you guys for being a part of God's business because this is God's business. Our business is God's business. This show is God's business. Thank you guys for supporting it, for sharing it, for reviewing it, for liking, thumbs up, commenting on it. We appreciate every single one of the the messages, the breakthroughs, etc. Let's make a difference for the kingdom together. I know the way to do it is by getting Christians together to finally work together and to grow wildly profitable kingdom businesses for the kingdom and in Jesus' name. Catch you on the next episode.